Hi, welcome to Sabbath School Daily, where we have been studying from this lesson right here, Psalms. This week we're studying from lesson number six, which has the title, I Will Arise, and today is Monday's lesson, which has the title, Justice for the Oppressed. Today's topic is one that I have often stopped to think about. The oppression, the injustice that are done against the vulnerable people in the world is something that is mind-boggling. And sometimes when I hear about some things that happen to people that can't help themselves, people that are helpless, I can't but help cry out to God in anguish, in anger that these things happen, asking him to intervene. And the fact that these things happen every single day around the world is a demonstrative that our world is truly broken. You know, in my family, I have one of these more vulnerable people, my brother, Michael. Michael was born with Down syndrome. And throughout my lifetime, I have observed moments, I've witnessed moments where He has been either bullied or treated badly, didn't really know how to defend himself or protect himself, and needed to count on his family, on me, on my parents, on closer friends in order to defend himself. It's something that is truly humbling to be able to care for someone in that situation. And at the same time, it makes me extremely angry. If there's one thing in this world that provokes anger in me, it's witnessing my little brother in that kind of situation. Now, what comforts me is that the biblical authors felt the same. And ultimately, what they reveal is that God also feels the same way. Look at what one of the chapters that are mentioned in today's lesson, which is Psalm chapter 9, verse 18. Look at what it says. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. There are several verses that are mentioned here that reveal that same kind of reality, that The needy, those who are powerless, who are helpless, they are not abandoned. It might seem that way sometimes, but the Bible reveals that justice will prevail and that those who abuse them, those who treat them horribly, will be brought to justice. Look at what the lesson says in the first paragraph. God exhibits special care and concern for justice regarding the various vulnerable groups of people, including the poor, needy, oppressed, fatherless, widows, widowers, and strangers. The Psalms, like the law and the prophets, are clear on that point. So you see that this isn't something isolated to one author, to one verse in the Bible. The God in the Bible is the God that defends the weak, the powerless, those who are vulnerable. The lesson continues saying that many Psalms use the expression poor and needy and avoid representing the oppressed in exclusively national and religious terms. This is done in order to highlight God's universal care for all of humanity. So you can't argue that this is regarding only the Israelites, only those who are part of God's Old Testament people. This is for the strangers as well, for those who dwell in the lands of God's people. Back then, there were several rules that protected those who were coming into Israel and that were vulnerable because they didn't know anyone, because they weren't part of the culture, because they didn't have a part in the heritage of those people. God cared for everyone. It's a universal reality that the Lord cares for the vulnerable, for those who are weak, who are powerless and helpless. The truth is that all of us fall into that category. As human beings, we are all weak and helpless. The problem is when we stop seeing ourselves from God's eyes and we start seeing ourselves in the terms of our power, our might, our wealth, our abilities, our opportunities, everything, every good gift comes from the Father above. And he is impartial. The Bible tells us that, that he sends his rain, his sunshine on the good and the bad. God is fair and just. But the Bible describes God as being the God of justice. And one day there will be a reckoning where those who do abuse, those who are weaker, they will be brought to justice. The lesson then continues saying that the expression poor and needy is not limited to material poverty, but also signifies vulnerability and helplessness. The expression appeals to God's compassion, and it conveys the idea that the sufferer is alone and has no other help but God. The depiction poor and needy also pertains to one's sincerity, truthfulness, and love for God in confessing one's total dependence on God and renouncing any trace of self-reliance and self-assertion. So many times in scripture, we'll see that those people who we would call successful and even mighty, they humble themselves in recognition that God is the ultimate source of power, the ultimate source of success and strength. You see that with David, with Solomon, with Moses, with Joshua. These are people that did have might and power in their hands, and yet they recognized where that might and power came from. I find that nowadays it has to be the same. Even for those who are wealthy, who have need of nothing, they need to understand, perhaps especially them, they need to understand that they are human beings like everyone else, and one day they will die. 
And what that means is that God as the final ultimate judge, he is the only one that can grant a true perspective of what we should be doing in this life. He is the only one that can grant a true perspective of what we should be doing in this life with the gifts that he's given us, be that wealth or strength or might or influence or power. All of these things are given by him in order so that we can use them for those who are vulnerable. Growing up, I would often hear my dad repeating this phrase. I don't really know who came up with it. I don't remember the original source of the saying. It's not my father, but he would repeat it over and over again growing up. And basically the saying goes like this. He who has God has everything. He who does not have God has nothing. And he who has God and has everything does not have more than he who has God and has nothing. Do you understand? When we have the Lord by our side, that means everything. All the other things, the wealth, the houses, the positions and properties, the influence, all of those things, ultimately, they mean nothing. They're going to burn at the very end of this world. When we die, they do not go with us. Truly, all that matters in this life is having God. Everything else, he will provide. The lesson then continues saying, meanwhile, caring for the deprived demonstrates the people's faithfulness to God. Evil done against the vulnerable were particularly heinous sins in biblical culture. The Psalms inspire faithful people to raise their voices against every oppression. So it's not enough to recognize God as the strength and might and power that we have in life, but we can be extensions of that. We can be his hands, his arms, his feet and legs here in this world in caring for those who can't care for themselves. And so when you stand up to defend someone who has no defense, you are being a Christ. You are being an extension of God, an extension of Jesus to that person. What does Jesus say in Matthew chapter 25? That those who do unto the least of these have done so unto him, right? That's what he tells us in Matthew 25. Remember that when you love those who are unlovable, when you reach out to those who are unreachable, when you care for those who are quote unquote uncareable, at least in the terms and perspective of those around you, you are being what Christ was. The lesson then continues saying this, the Psalms also underline the futility of grounding one's confidence on perishable human means as the ultimate source of wisdom and security. God's people must resist the temptation to put ultimate faith for salvation in human leaders and institutions, especially when they differ from God's ways. Be very careful in how you approach politics, for example. There are those who are staunch defenders of this politician or that politician, of this political party and that political party. Friends, we belong to the kingdom of heaven. Our king, our president, our representative, our senator, our everything is Jesus Christ. It's not any human leader. These people can do either very good or very bad. But the true reality is that they are just human beings. And while we are here in this world, of course, we should respect and honor the worldly authorities to whatever extent that we can. But ultimately, our country, our land, our nation is heaven. You are citizens primarily of heaven, not of this world. Since I was very young, uh, I think because we moved around so much, we lived in the US, we lived in Canada, we lived then in Brazil, I never really developed this... Um, loyalty or sense of kinship to one land or nation or heritage. I don't really see myself in those terms. And I don't think that Christians should. I think that we should see ourselves in the terms of citizens of the heavenly kingdom. That's where we belong. And that is ultimately where we're going to go. In eternity, that's what we're going to be. Citizens of the new Jerusalem, citizens of the city of God, not citizens of any worldly nation, not represented by fallible human beings. So don't die on any hills for human politicians. Friends, the world is corrupt. I'm not saying that we should accept corruption. Of course we shouldn't. And we should use our voices in civil discourse. We should use our voices in democracy's name to champion this that we're talking about right here, the defense of those who find themselves weak and powerless and unheard. But at the same time, don't sell your soul to that. You belong to God, not to these politicians, not to this land or to this country. Ultimately, we know where this is going to end. We know that we're going to be persecuted. We're going to be handed over to these courts and judicial systems. And there is not going to be one side or another side, not one political party or another, not one politician or another that are going to come up for our defense. These people are going to be part of the same system. 
And that's where we have to understand that we are, again, citizens of heaven. I hope the message came clear. I'm here not placing myself against one in favor of another. I'm not playing any kind of political game. I'm a very apolitical person, precisely because I believe that this earth is not my final home. Finally, the lesson says this. In his grace, our Lord identified himself with the poor by becoming poor himself, that through his poverty, many might become rich. Christ's riches include deliverance from every oppression brought by sin, and he promises us eternal life in God's kingdom. Jesus Christ fulfills the Psalm's promises as the divine judge, who will judge every mistreatment of the deprived, as well as neglect of duty toward them. That is the God that I follow. That is the Lord and master that I worship and I praise. None other are worthy of our worship, only the God of heaven. Be this defender for those who are weak, for those who are poor, for those who are in need. Follow Christ's example. Defend those who are defenseless. Help those who are helpless. And I'm sure that he will be your power, your strength in doing so. Remember to study your lesson. This is a beautiful lesson. Study it, read it, look up the Bible verses, answer the questions, think about these topics as you go throughout your day. Also remember to comment down below. I love hearing from you. And please remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to our videos. We release one every day. And I hope to see you again here tomorrow for another Sabbath School Daily.